Hi, I'm Jim Shaw from Lex Media and also the Lexington Colonial Times. I'm here today on um, Friday, May 1st, with select board member Mark Sandine. Um, and, uh, you know, we're starting a new month. And um, although, I don't know, I saw the governor's press conference today to some degree, and he did acknowledge that for, I think, three days in a row, the actual numbers have just have either flattened or gone down just a touch uh, of, for new cases, which isn't a whole lot of reason to, to uh, you know, get excited, but at least we're not, at least we're moving in the right direction. So I know you've had a busy morning today, Mark. I know you've been watching press conferences like I have and also sitting in on long Board of Health meetings and, um, and having discussions with other folks. So how are you? Are you doing okay today? I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. I hope you're doing well. Sir. Yeah, we are. Laurie and I are doing just fine, and our son Devin is, oh, is okay too. So thanks for asking. Um, let's start. Let's start with today's number. I did not go on the website today to see what the Lexington COVID number is. I don't know if you had a chance. The latest number is uh, 261 uh, confirmed cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so we uh, in Lexington, it's uh, slowing down a little bit. It looks like, but you can't really take a lot out of that because uh, it's all right. about how much testing we're doing. In that regard, uh, we did have a, a big drive-through test today that was oversubscribed. 250 people originally planned, and we actually have got 300 people in. Really? All, all of those were folks from Lexington? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but it was designed yeah. to be for Lexington residents. So yeah, I know, I know some folks who actually went there today. They were Lexington people. Right. So, uh, so And there was a process. That they had to go through a process in order to get to, to uh, get on the list to go get a test. You couldn't just show up. But there's a lot of interesting things that have been going on this week. Uh, you mm -hmm. may have heard earlier in the week that the governor announced that uh, he had, a, you know, last time you and I talked, the governor had said that we would be closed until May 4th, only essential businesses open until May 4th. He right. extended that out to May 18th. Mm -hmm. And he put a public private task force with actually some members from Lexington on that public-private task force to provide recommendations to the state as to how mm -hmm. we could go about reopening non-essential businesses. So right. we, well, I know, we, I know Michael Keneally is on that. He's the Secretary yes. of Econo Economic Affairs. Now, who else in Lexington is on there? Do you, that, do you know? that's, who I was, that's who I was referring to. Oh, okay. Oh, Mike, Mike yeah. No, and, um, no, it's great. Having Mike in that position, I mean, he's, he's one of the leaders of that committee. I know the chair is the lieutenant governor but the, uh, the governor's le leaning very heavily on Mike for, for a lot of advice and counsel. So. So, so that team will be making recommendations to the governor on May 18th. So right. my guess is that we would be expecting to hear that the um, uh, uh, essential businesses will still be, that, that deadline will be extended after May 18th, but we'll start to have some plan for how we move forward. Uh -huh. uh, the town manager uh, notified the select board that the police and firefighters that have been out due to exposure are, have now returned back to work. So that's a, a positive sign as well. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the return to work thing, the town managers also set up a return to work task force for town staff, which are mm -hmm. gonna consist of staff members from each building in town, as well as uh, from each of the different departments to challenge us on how we should be thinking differently about how to work effectively in the future. And one of the interesting things the town manager is asking staff to do in this remote working world that we should continue doing in the future and what should we, what are we looking forward to getting back to uh, normal on. So we're mm -hmm. going to start to hear that in a week or two of what right. that's do you know, is, is the town manager talking about, uh, a, uh, so the task force is really a focus on town government. Will he have any, any discussions with folks outside of the town or any guidance from outside of, not, when I say the town, I'm talking about town employees in terms of, of how to work in tandem with the governor and what their plans are for opening business. Because I know, you know, we, we our board of health moved to close hair salons and and um, uh, gyms before the governor did. So I know that there's some, there's some overlap and in, in the possibility that, you know, we may want to do things a little differently in Lexington. I don't know if, um, if, so I guess the question is, do you know if Jim and I should probably should ask him 
has any yeah. plan for reaching out to businesses? Is there any formula for that or plan for that? We, as you're probably aware, we've hired a new economic development uh, director and uh, mm -hmm. the town manager is very focused on connecting with our businesses to figure out how we do this in an effective way. Right. Uh, yeah, that would be a really good thing to get more details from the town manager on, on Monday. Great. Okay. That'll, that'll be good. Now, I understand the governor made an announcement also today about masks. And I know that you guys, uh, when I say you guys, I know as a member of the Board of Selectmen, you were sort of sitting in on and watching the, the Board of Health meeting today that I, I believe is still going on. It's been going on since 1130. Right. And they, talk, they talked about a couple of hours about masks and the governor made a decision about masks as well. What did yeah. you hear? In Can you talk about both both the governor sure. and, and the Board of Health? Sure. Our, our Board of Health um, uh, uh, voted to uh, require that um, uh, uh, people wear masks when they're in essential businesses and non-essential businesses as we start to go into a, into a return to work world, that everybody should be wearing masks when they're in indoor settings, whether that's at work or at a, at a shop or something along that lines. The interesting thing is that about uh, half an hour after that order was voted on by our Board of Health, the governor announced that everywhere in the state, any person over the age of two who's in a public place in the Commonwealth, whether that's indoors or outdoors, uh, is going to be required to wear a mask that covers their mouth and their nose except if that person has a disability, a medical disability, that's a, that makes them exempt. And, and I understand that goes into effect on May 6th. That, yes, exactly, right, right. on Wednesday. So right, right. as of Wednesday, all persons will be required to wear masks or cloth face coverings at all times when they're inside mm -hmm. a grocery store, a pharmacy, or other retail stores. They'll be right. required to do that in a taxi, in a car, in ride sharing, whether it's public transit, anything along that lines. Right. Now, and let me ask you, too. I mean, the governor did, did say in his press conference that he's encouraging people um, essentially not to use medical grade masks because Correct. they want to they want to reserve those and conserve them for medical personnel who need them that, you know, encar they're encouraging people to wear the cloth masks, the, the, you know, and other types of masks that are sort of right. easily available or made. Um, so the, the reason yeah. for the order a lot of people don't realize that they think I'm wearing the mask to protect myself, but it turns out that the primary reason that folks are interested, the medical professionals are interested in us wearing the mask is if we cough or sneeze and we happen to be asymptomatic, the mask will capture those particles and not transmit them to our friends or family or, or some right. unsuspecting person on the road. And right. so that's what the reason is, is even if you're feeling perfectly healthy and happy, uh, you should be wearing a mask outside because we're seeing that many people are spreading the disease when they feel perfectly fine. And so uh, you're mm -hmm. putting the mask on in order to protect the, re the rest of right. the world. Well, it was interesting because I watched a little bit of the, um, the meeting this morning of the Board of Health. I had to jump off after a while because I had other things to take care of. But, the, you know, they were talking about the inside versus the outside and um, whether it should be an advisory or an order. And then, of course, we heard from the police chief who talked about, you know, the, the challenge of enforcing and all of that. So, and as you, as you meant, and then the governor sort of came in and, and decided yeah. it's going to be everywhere. Every, and I think the governor's quote was no ands, ifs, no ands, but ands, ifs, or buts about it. Right. Um, what, we're, that's, what, we're, yeah. what we're finding is that, uh, and the Board of Health talked about this, as it's getting warmer and warmer and people are not at work, they're outside on the streets, on the bike paths, and it mm -hmm. becomes impossible to stay six feet away from somebody when there's right. two or three people walking abreast and you're riding your bike and whatever. Right. And I'm uh, seeing it on, on my way to the office today. And I, you know, I saw a couple of young families walking along Pleasant Street, kids on their bicycles with their parents, none of them wearing masks. Um, right. And, you know, people are venturing out, you know, it's such a simple request and it really isn't, you know, I've been wearing a mask now for a while and uh, it's, it's not a problem. Um, it's, it's, it, 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 there you go. It's yep. that simple. It's so that simple. Yeah. This, this mask, uh, a neighbor of mine made for me 
And it turns out that we have neighbors in Lexington who've made 9,000 handmade masks, maybe mm -hmm. five or six or 10 at a time. But there are people who are working. Uh, well, there is a mask group. Jesse Steigerwald yeah. is part of this group. And, and I, I don't mean to single her out, but she's, she's always sort of at the forefront of these efforts. Um, but she and her group, um, and there are a lot of them, have really, as you say, made thousands of masks that are out there. And they've made them available to some of the nursing homes in town and other places. And I'm sure that effort will continue. So if somebody needs a mask, I'm sure, you know, they can find, they can find one. They're, they're easily, they're easily available or readily available. And so one of the other things that doctors are starting to say is that it might be nice to get yourself a, a pulse oximeter. Uh, one of these little things that you put in your, put on the end of your finger. And mm -hmm. um, they're finding that the best sign of whether you have COVID or not might be what your blood oxygen levels are. You may feel like you're perfectly fine, but if your blood oxygen levels are declining, that's a good mm -hmm. sign you ought to be. Uh, Where do you find something like that? At a medical, at a, like a medical store or something? Or, I, well, I, the, which was maybe I, closed, I, I don't know. I got it, uh, I got it uh, online. Okay, there you go. 20 bucks. Uh, yeah, it's probably a, a, a good investment. Yeah, uh, in the long run. Um, well, it, you know, the, the weekend is calling. The, the you know the weather forecast for the weekend is, is it's supposed to be absolutely beautiful. People are going to be out and about. Um, you know, I just would take this opportunity, and I'm sure you'd join me in this, and encouraging people to you know don't wait till May six to put masks on. I would get them on now. When did the did the Board of Health they voted, but did they vote to? Was there a timeline for their vote? Um, they they uh, they they approved their order today, and they had uh, I think uh, their plan was for it to go into effect on Tuesday. On Tuesday, okay. So, so this weekend though, if people are out in the good weather, they really should, you know, again keep their dogs on a leash, um, which is was a big issue, and wear a mask. It's not that it's not that difficult, and if people have a difficult time finding finding a mask. Um, uh, where is there anywhere we can direct them or I mean are they are, are they readily readily available down at like uh, the, the pharmacies or anything like that I'm not I'm not aware of, I'm not sure I'm not the right person yeah. to ask about availability of masks but there are right. on the town website um, a number of links that show you how to make masks they're right. fairly they're fairly simple yeah my wife has made so far she's made about 25 of them um, I'm not sure where she's donated them, but she's, she, the, the one I have, my wife made and it wasn't that difficult. So, well, anyway, so I think we've made the point. Um, let's move on to something a little different. One of the things, uh, one of the things that that's been near and dear to your heart is a sustainability issue here, uh, in Lexington in Massachusetts and around. You've been a leader in that. You've been out in the sort of the forefront and, I understand we have a new sustainability director in Lexington. Tell us a little bit about who that person is, what they'll be doing. So we just hired uh, uh, a sustainability director, a woman named Stella Carr. Uh, she's been um, doing sustainability work for the city of Chandler in Arizona. She'll be joining Lexington starting May 26th. It's the first time we've had this position in uh, the town of Lexington. Um, what we've seen for other communities who have hired sustainability directors is that there are a tremendous amount of grant money available uh, for um, towns uh, that allow them to take advantage of uh, some of the uh, uh, move forward on some of the initiatives that they want. And we're seeing uh, in a lot of towns in the area, five times to 11 times the salary of the sustainability directors brought in through grants from the report writing that allows us to uh, then do things like make our buildings more efficient and also save energy. So for example, uh, Sean Newell, the assistant director of public facilities has been writing grants for, to the green communities for our buildings. He's secured $1.3 million for the town of Lexington over the last few years. And um, those grants have, put, have let us put in LEDs and put in more efficient uh, uh, heating and ventilating systems. And those are saving us 2 million kilowatt hours a year. It's about half a million dollars a year on our mm -hmm. budget. 
So we're and we're, doing we, for we, climate we, and for our wallets at the same and time. Are we beginning to, the process of, of switching out li lights on the street lamps as well, aren't we? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I haven't uh, checked in on this in a couple weeks, but a couple weeks ago, the town manager sent a note out saying, we had completed 60% of the street lights. I would, wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if, there, uh, if that process is almost complete by now. Mm -hmm. But That's yes, you, you, so that saves us about half of the energy that we were using previously and also provides us with a warmer light. I don't know if you noticed or not, but it's more sort of like a warmer light. The bluer lights that uh, some folks have put in were keeping people up at night and not letting them sleep at night. And so... Uh, right. The, and they're mm -hmm. and they're aimed down towards the ground, so they don't um, uh, you don't see it from the from the satellites anymore. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I think that's you know that's uh, we've covered quite a few topics here. Um, I, I think we're uh, you know I, I you know I just sort of think, sitting here thinking, reflecting. It's May first. This is no, nowhere, no one ever expected that this is where we're going to be on May 1st as the good weather has come through. We talked, I talked with Susan the other day about all the events that have been canceled, all the, all the stuff that we look forward to in, in May, you know, Veterans Day parades, the um, Discovery Day has been postponed, uh, you know, all of these great events. And it's just, it's tough. I actually lost a very, very dear friend. Um, someone I grew up with who lived here in Le didn't live in here in Lexington, but grew up here in Lexington and lived um, yeah. down in Norwood. She passed away two days ago, um, 50, 59, I believe she was. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's hard to process. We, we're yeah. losing people and it's still frustrating because I see so many people. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. One of my best buddies lost his mom uh, uh, this week and mm -hmm. uh, in Framingham. Yeah. yeah. So. I was talking with somebody from the, from the library, one of the assistant librarians who said that, that five people who were regular visitors to the library that he knew have, have passed. Um, I've know, I know at least three or I know four people personally, two that I was extremely close to um, have passed as a result of this. So I guess it's just another way of saying as we close out this, this discussion, people really should take the precautions. Don't, you know, I see so many folks protesting or talking about civil liberties and, you know, and, and live life. Don't, don't let it bind you in, but you know what? We have to do these things. We all have to come around because well, as I say, it's, 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 it's killing people we know and love. It's not, it's not like somebody else. It, there are people in our lives that are, that are affected by this. And then of course, the residual effect of, of the grief on the family and everything else. It's just, uh, it's, it's almost um, too much to bear. So right. anyway, so on that somber note, <laughs> <laughs> I wish you a happy May. I wish you a great weekend and I hope you, I wish you and your family continued good health. Well, thank you. And you as well. And All right. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Mark. You. Thanks for being with us today.